Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing another tier list. As you can see, we'll be ranking the films of Paul Verhoeven today, the um, Dutch director who had an interesting career. Um, I've just recently gotten into him as I haven't really seen any of his movies that much besides um, originally seeing Robocop and uh, Total Recall when I was a bit younger. And um, so I went back and watched almost all of his films. I didn't watch many of his early Dutch films because they didn't look that interesting to me. However, I watched all of his uh, US films <clears throat> and then his more recent um, foreign films when he went back to, um, I think he went to France to film a few and things like that. So uh, I've seen 11 in total. So on this list here, I've seen them from Starship Troopers through to The Fourth Man. So I haven't seen these um, one, two, three, four, five films after The Fourth Man, but the first 11 I've seen. So <clears throat> I'm going to be ranking all of those ones on this list. And um, yeah, after going through them, I think most of them are going to end up on the B tier because I think overall he's a pretty solid director. He has a few great films um, and some really good films, but in my opinion, he doesn't really have as far as the ones I've seen, any bad films. So that's pretty cool. And he's a very interesting director because he's worked a lot in um, kind of science fiction, um, but also he's done a few kind of Hitchcockian thrillers and erotic thrillers and things like that, as well as some war films. And um, yeah, just a bit all over the place. So he's had an interesting career. So uh, we'll jump straight into it with Starship Troopers. So this is one of his more popular films. And I was expecting to really love this film because I really love... Uh, Robocop and Total Recall and this is kind of the third film in this um, unofficial I guess sci-fi trilogy of films that he made uh, while he was doing films in the US but um, Starship Troopers was probably my least favorite of the three however I still really enjoyed it and I think it's a solid B tier film I know it's a satirical film so it's got like bad acting and over the top performances and violence and things like that and I understood where they were going with it but overall I just thought it was a solid B tier film I didn't think it was anything amazing, uh, but I did have fun with it. I thought the characters were quite funny and interesting and over the top, and some of the action scenes were really cool. Some of the CG was a bit questionable, and some of the film looked like a TV movie. But I did like all the propaganda and all the uh, kind of background uh, news reports and things that were going through the film, which kind of was obviously representative of um, when a country's at war and things like that. So it was an interesting movie, and it was definitely more than just a big shoot 'em up bug splatter film. And I did enjoy it for that. Uh, next up, we have Hollow Man. This is a film that a lot of people don't like. Um, it was the last US film that he made. And I actually didn't mind it. I thought it was decent for what it was. It probably doesn't have as much of an impact as far as the story it's trying to tell as some of his other satirical kind of films. But it was still a decent probably B movie, but probably a lower B movie um, when comparing it to all these other films. Uh, Kevin Bacon's in it and Elizabeth Shue and Josh Brolin was, was in it as well in one of his earlier roles. Um, it had some really great visual effects like how they uh, transition him from being visible to invisible with showing all like the muscle matter and um, organs and blood system and things like that was really cool. So I did enjoy the film. Um, I didn't love it again though. And next up we have another B tier film and that's Black Book. Uh, I'm going to put this between these two films. I think I was expecting to like this movie a little bit more than I did. I did think it was a solid film and it's, um, I think it's about two and a half hours, which is a long movie, but it's extremely fast paced the whole way through. And I think this was my issue with it was that it was so fast paced. There was so much going on and so little time that none of it seemed to have any real impact because it just kept rushing through it. And it was like going from event to event to event. And like, it was interesting it was never boring or dull because of how fast it was. But like I said, I didn't I didn't really connect too much to any of the characters. Nothing felt too impactful because it just kept rushing through it because it's trying to cover this big um, elaborate and wide story, which was pretty cool. But I think they could have probably made it better by making it like a three-hour epic and maybe just slowing down a little bit throughout the film just so that there's a bit more impact in the film however it did look great it had great performances uh, and music and things like that and it was a very intense film uh, with some great sequences and i did i did really enjoy it but i yeah like i said i just think it was a bit all over the place and a bit jumbled um but yeah still a solid film and i know a lot of people love it um so next up we have Basic Instinct and this is very much like a Hitchcockian kind of thriller especially when it comes to like the music and the lead characters and things like that. It's kind of a little bit like a Vertigo remake in ways as well which is one of my favorite films so I was really keen to see this and uh, it's a really good movie. I'm going to put it in the A tier. 
And Michael Douglas did a few films like this around this era, like Fatal Attraction and stuff, but I definitely think this is the better one. Um, the performances are really great. As I said, the music is really great. I love this kind of film score. I think it was Jerry Goldsmith who he has actually worked with Paul Verhoeven quite a bit. And this is a very good score. I love music like this that kind of is very atmospheric and gets you involved in the film and the mystery and things like that. As far as the mystery goes, I didn't think it was super involved and interesting, but I just think watching these characters and the situations they're in um, was what I enjoyed about the film the most because it's really a cat and mouse kind of game with this detective and this woman who you don't know or not whether she killed killed someone and you're trying to figure it out right until the last minute pretty much. So it is a good film. Uh, I did enjoy it quite a bit and it's, um, yeah, definitely a bit over the top like most of his films are in some aspects, but it was really good. Uh, next we have Elle and this is another one of his more recent foreign films. Um, and this is my favorite of his recent films. I actually enjoyed this one quite a bit, uh, though it's another B-tier film. Um, yeah, it's about a woman who's raped and she's doesn't really tell anyone or make any big fuss about it, but she's kind of trying to figure out a way to find out who it was and get back at this person. And it's got a lot of plot twists and turns, like halfway through the film, you find out who this person was and things really don't go the way you think they're going to. And uh, it was quite interesting in that sense because... I like movies that kind of keep you guessing the whole time and this movie definitely does that. It just keeps changing direction all the time and it was very interesting in that way and it had some great performances as well. So I did enjoy that movie quite a bit. Uh, next we have Robocop. This is obviously a classic. I remember seeing bits of this as a kid but not remembering too much so I did did go back to it recently and rewatched it and I really loved it. I thought it was excellent and definitely one of his best films and it's definitely an S tier movie for me. I think what's kept me from watching it is it's always felt like a Terminator ripoff to me uh, and I love the Terminator films so I never bothered going back to Robocop but after re-watching it there is definitely some Terminator influence in the film but it's more interested in the satirical um, government side of things and that was an interesting kind of uh, lens to have on the film that obviously Terminator didn't go into but this movie has some really great scenes, some really graphic and over-the-top violence, a really fantastic musical score as well. I think it's another Jerry Goldsmith score. Um, yeah, just some great action. Uh, I think it was his first big Hollywood film. Like, he made Flesh and Blood, his first English language film, but Robocop was his first big Hollywood film that really, I guess, kind of established him as a director in the US. And um, yeah, it's just one of those classic 80s sci-fi action films now, and I really loved it. I even bought it on Blu-ray and stuff, so uh, definitely an S-tier film. Next we have Benedetta, and this is his latest movie, another foreign film uh, from recently, actually, in 2021, and I only just saw this a couple nights ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's apparently based on a true story of this lesbian nun who um, like had visions of Jesus, and she lived in this Catholic <coughs> monastery in like the 17th century, I think. And... Um, it was another one that's like got a lot of twists and turns and it's over the top and obviously obviously i feel like it's definitely been elaborated on a lot more and added a lot more to for to make it a big entertaining kind of film uh rather than what what's probably in the book i don't know i haven't read the book but it was an interesting movie and i think the thing that interested me most about it was the depiction of certain churches and religious groups that are really just there to be a business and make money because um, each of these girls who's in the convent has to pay like a dowry pretty much from their parents when they go there, a big sum of money. And then um, it's all about this kind of image and about money and it's not really about a personal relationship with God, which is what it should be. And so that it's interesting to see how obviously churches today are still like that, unfortunately, but um, that it's obviously been like that since the beginning of time. So it was a, an interesting film, it had some entertaining moments, it was quite over the top and it was funny at times, but it was definitely not a great film that I would recommend to anyone um, or everyone, <coughs> but it was still a B-tier film um, because it was decent enough. Uh, next up we have Flesh and Blood. So this, as I said earlier, was his first English language film from 1985, I think. Uh, it starred Rutger Hauer and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee when she was very young. And it was actually a pretty good medieval adventure film. Um, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Again, it's still a B-tier film, so I'll put it up probably here. 
I did enjoy it more than I thought I was going to, though. I had fun with it. I thought the characters were interesting. I thought some of the action was cool. It was definitely very violent and over the top, as usual, which you come to expect with his films. Um, but, yeah, it was it was good. I, don't, I would recommend it. Um, but as I said, yeah, it's quite over the top again with some of its um, elements and things like that. But it was a good, solid film and quite graphic in the depiction of, like I said, violence, but especially like the plague, the Black Plague and things like that and what it was like <clears throat> so that was pretty rough to see um what it would have been like for people to go through <clears throat> uh, next we have showgirls from the 90s 95 this was a really crazy film <laughs> it's really out there and over the top it's kind of like he went so far with basic instinct then he's like oh let's see how far we can push it um now with showgirls with the kind of like nudity and sex and things like that um it's a weird movie because it's entertaining it's over long, it's over bloated, it's got bad performances, it's got good performances. Um, yeah, but overall, it's still a B-tier film, I'm going to say, but it's definitely at the bottom of the B-tier for me. Uh, as it was entertaining enough, though, to be in the B-tier, I think, and um, I probably it's not a film that I'd really recommend, but it's a film that, as I said, it's like, there's no other movies really like this movie. It's just excessive, it's over the top, it's... Um, graphic it's got good performances bad performances um, it looks good as a film um, yeah it's just a bit all, all over the place to be honest but still kind of BT I guess um, but yeah next up we have another great film and it's Total Recall this is one I'd watched years ago kind of like Robocop and just forgotten about and recently I was like you know I gotta go I gotta see that again so I did watch it and I, I absolutely loved it and it's actually my favorite Paul Verhoeven film so it's going to be the top of the S tier. I think it's fantastic. And um, I bought it on 4K as well after watching it. And like, yeah, it's easily one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's best roles and performances, obviously outside of the Terminator and Predator and things like that. But just the visuals in the film alone, like everything on Mars looks so cool. The, the um, aesthetics are very Paul Verhoeven. Like it's got that look. You can tell that, sorry, it was made by the guy who did Robocop and uh, Starship Troopers. It just has that look and feel to it. It's got that great musical score by Jerry Goldsmith. Um, Schwarzenegger can be a bit iffy in some roles, but he's really great here. He really commits to it. And it's just such a fun um, action-adventure sci-fi film. And it's violent and over-the-top and crazy like, like you'd expect, but just really original and fun and has a great story to it. So, um, yeah, it's definitely my favorite of his movies. And I'd highly recommend it. And last but not least, or maybe least actually, is um, this is the only film I've seen from his early Dutch career. And it just, it was 1983, so it just came out as his last Dutch film before he started making English language films. And that's The Fourth Man from, yeah, 1983. Uh, and it's very much like a Hitchcockian kind of thriller as well, in the vein of like Basic Instinct or, um, yeah just like some of his more out there raunchy kind of thrillers and it was interesting it was probably my least favorite of his films though i'd even put it below showgirls but still entertaining enough to be in the b tier so um yeah it definitely had his style all over it from the beginning um i can't say whether he had that in all these earlier films down here as i haven't seen any of them but um the fourth man i think really elaborated on his style and had it there from the get-go um, so obviously he was making films way back in the 70s as well with these movies down here. But um, yeah, I'm pretty much just focused on obviously the ones I've seen. So I would recommend um, most of his films, to be honest. Like obviously Total Recall, Robocop, Basic Instinct are all great films. I really loved those three. And I thought Starship Troopers, L, Flesh and Blood were really good. Black Book was good, but over the top. Uh, and too fast paced as i said benedetta and hollow man were good but had a lot of rubbish in them too uh and showgirls and the fourth man were just messy kind of over the top films that showed his style but didn't really perfect it yet so yeah it's a very b um b tier list heavy um tier list this time but uh yeah he's a very interesting director with a unique vision and style that comes out in most of his films and um, as I said, I'd recommend his science fiction films the most because they're probably his most accessible and most popular films. Um, but yeah, they're the ones I've seen, guys. And that's probably where I'll leave it for today for this video. So um, thanks for watching. Please comment down below and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.